Hi, my name is Alana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And on this channel, we predominantly review books. I've been on a book review kick. I do have a haul coming up sometime in the summer. Um, and I do have a tag coming up. There's a tag that a bookish friend tagged me in and it was a good one. So I was like, oh, I want to make sure to take time for that. I do want to do a video in the future about how I annotate books. I just really need to want to, I want to hash that out to figure out like how I want to, how I want to do that. And there are some book reviews still that I read from a, from a couple of years ago before I had a YouTube channel that I want to have video reviews of. I'm mainly thinking Lolita and, um, my brain just blinked. Oh my goodness. A little life. <laughs> how could I forget the title of a little life? Yes. So but yeah, that's, that's it. I do have a tag coming up before the end of the year, the calendar year. I want to do a how I annotate and I will have a haul coming up. But if you've seen my hauls from last year, this haul is going to be small. It is a, it is a haul, but th these are all the books I've accrued in the first six months of the year. I think I haul, I did four or five hauls last year still smaller than just one of those hauls. So when I say I was buying less books this year, I meant it. <laughs> okay. This video is, as you can tell by the title, a book review, a very short book review of Writers and Lovers. This is a very quick read for me. Very quick, very cozy. I really enjoyed this book. And, but I, I wanted to dedicate a video to it and not just put it into one of my mini reviews videos. I wanted to just have it ha have it have its own video the book doesn't require a whole lot of analysis it, it's not one of those books that you read to analyze for eons but there are, i think some interesting things to pull from it so i do have some quotes but it was one of those books that you pick up when you want something comforting there is a particular feeling in your body when something goes right after a long time of things going wrong so in Writers and Lovers by Lily King, the narrator, Kat Casey, is processing the unexpected death of her mother. She's also in the midst of writing her first novel while being overwhelmed and consumed by massive amounts of debt that she's accrued. She's living in what's essentially a shed in somebody's backyard and she's waitressing just to keep her head above water. This novel takes place in Boston in 1997. Boston. Boston. AC is working through her grief and though it takes time, she does begin to get closure. She begins to move on. On I said the word. She begins to move on and enter into a new phase of life. So Writers and Lovers is a very straightforward, quick novel. And though, like I said, I'll be pulling a couple quotes here talking about some of the themes or not a ton of them. It doesn't require a deep dive. I think it's almost unnecessary to say, but grief is definitely a main or the main theme of this novel. Lily King was actually writing a different novel when her mother, her own mother, unexpectedly passed away. And so she ends up switching gears and writing this book. I'm, I, this just occurred to me. I wonder if she'll ever revisit that other novel. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Or maybe that will be released at another time. I don't know. But anyway, out of the death of her mother, this is the novel that ended up coming out that she ended up writing. It is also, it is very evident through this novel that King is also working through her own grief, grief through Casey. I wanted her and no one else to tell me the story of how she died. I didn't let myself believe it's her. I don't allow myself to believe that my mother's body, her hair, her smile, the two chords that made the sound of her voice her heart, her good bum, her moisturized legs, her toes that tinkled when she walked had just burned down to this rubble in my hand. And so with this discussion of grief, grief, we have this discussion of memory. And I think that tends to come hand in hand with a lot of books when they, when grief is one of the main topics. So as the character is grieving, she's real, Casey is relying on her memory to fill in for the person that is no longer physically present. He, Marcel Proust, considered suicide, but believed it would be killing his mother again if he destroyed his own memory of her. When he left the clinic, he began to write a critical essay. 
fueled by an imaginary by imaginary conversations with his mother. In the piece, he reached back to memories of his childhood, to saying goodnight to his mother, and it becomes the beginning of Swan's Way. I really like that she included that. There's this whole little chapter in this book where she is talking about authors and how what they did, how they processed, how it affected when they lost their own mothers. And a lot of them, it pushed them into the creative process. And also for a lot, for many of them, Virginia Woolf is using an example, it led into a break, a mental break, a snap almost, and they never really recovered from it. So King, through Casey, is looking at all of these great writers and how none of them, in order to be the great that the greats that they were, they had to go through this horrible thing. And in a way, as sad as it was, it propelled them into a different, a, a different dimension, if you will, in their writing or in their life. So she's putting herself in good company. Someone reminded me of her recently. I feel the memory just out of reach, sweet as of as if memory has flavors. Lastly, Casey is writing a novel and has connections with authors sorry, has connections with others who are aspiring writers or who are already authors. And also this is dealing with the editing and publishing sphere. There is a lot of discussion in this book about the writing process and the patience it takes to not only write a novel, but to go through the editing process, to go through the publishing process. There are many who start or many who want to be writers and then they just never, they fall off. They fall off somewhere in the process and they go into more traditional means of employment. The hardest thing about writing is getting in every day, breaking through the membrane. The second hardest thing is getting out. I think of her in her office in Alexandria, playing the role of a lawyer for so many hours a day. I think of all the people playing roles, getting further and further away from themselves for what moves them, what stirs them all up inside. She's talking about a peer who also wanted to be an author, and it just didn't work out, so she ended up playing the role as an attorney. Yes, making killer money outside of DC as an attorney, but is she really living that rich of a life if she's actually not doing what she is actually most passionate about? So that is a, a discussion that Lily, Lily, Lily King has, in, has in, this, in this book. Writers and Lovers is a quick, satisfying, and compulsive read. There is something comforting about it. There's something cozy about it, despite the fact that we are dealing with the main character who is dealing with grief and death and is struggling most of it, struggling <laughs> through most of this narrative. However, I see why so many people raved about this book. Lily King authentically writes about Casey and what's going on in her life in a very blunt way, but it's still effective. It's not overly contrived or flowery. It just gets the job done. Um, we also do have some, as, as you can tell, it's called Writers and Lovers. So we do have some of Casey's relationships. She reflects on past romantic relationships in the current relationships that she's in or the men that she's dating. I um, mean, there is a point in this book where she comes across two men in her life. She's dating them and she has to make a choice of which one is the better choice for her. And so um, I wouldn't call this a romance at all, but we do have Casey figuring out which man to pick as she's moving into a different phase of her life. As a waitress also, we get this really fun behind the scenes life at waitressing and what it's like to work in a restaurant. If you were a fan of Sweet Bitter and that behind the scenes breaking what goes on, breaking that fourth wall, if you will, and, and showing what goes on as a waitress in a restaurant. This book reminded me of Sweet Bitter a lot. Um, and so on stage, off stage, when waitresses, waitresses and waiters know how to turn it on and turn it off, they're smiling in your face as they bring you your food and yeah, everything's great, but the cook's back there having a tantrum and all this stuff. So this really reminded me of Sweet Bitter. Um, I'm really keen to read some of her other novels. I This is my first Lily King. If you have read other Lily King novels, please let me know what is the best novel to go into after this because I have no idea. I looked at all her novels. I just don't know where to start. Should I read them in publication order or just pick and choose? I don't know. I can see myself rereading this. Again, when I'm in the mood to reach for something that's 
feels comforting. It's so weird how an author can do that. I think that takes a lot of talent when you can write about difficult topics in a way that almost, this could be a beach read. It's not vapid in any way. It's not silly. It's not cheesy. It's not contrived, but it feels cozy. How do you do that? <laughs> um, so yeah, I will definitely be rereading this. Also, if you are an aspiring novelist or writer, Lily King drops these little gems of writing advice that I that I think are would be beneficial. Just these little hints of, hey, I've been in this game for a while. Let me drop some nuggets. She has some good nuggets in there. I gave this a four out of five. I really enjoyed it. Looking forward to rereading it. Quick read. It just felt like a hug. It was a nice, good hug. I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I look forward to reading more Lily King. Have you read Writers and Lovers? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also feel free to like and subscribe if you like these types of book reviews. Also, please feel free to follow me on Instagram where I get up to more bookish shenanigans. All of my reviews go live first on Instagram. I also post my monthly TBRs, my reading wrap-ups, and the occasional funny meme because that is what the interwebs are for, having a good laugh. I'm going to sign off and I will see you in the next one.